Having success in business, or on farms for that matter, a lot of times comes down to managing the little things. And one of the most little things on farms, the most minor things, is micronutrients. Oh, I don't know if it's minor, Brian. You know, we, we talk about high yielding production and we get lots of calls and emails saying, how, how can I get my yields up? What's one or two big things I can do that are just gonna change everything on my farm? And the answer is really, there, there aren't those great big things that you can do in most cases. It comes down to a lot of little things. And one of those little things that doesn't really add a lot of cost is putting a micronutrient into your program. Putting a mix of micronutrients into your crop fertility program doesn't cost much, but it could pay big dividends next fall. Okay, let's start with this. We want you to look at this chart where we're gonna show you 200 bushel corn versus 60 bushel beans versus 80 bushel wheat and what we actually pull out when we remove the grain from the field, what the grain actually takes to produce in terms of micronutrients. If you add all these up, <laughs> They're it's really, not really much. small numbers there <laughs> to add right. up. You get one or two pounds with micronutrients nutrients. So it's not like we need this huge amount. So here's what happens a lot of times when we start talking about micronutrients with a farmer. He'll say, well, gosh, I only need a couple of pounds out there. You know what? Just to save some time, I'm just going to throw 20 out there. That way I'm good. I'll be good for quite a few years. <laughs> and that is not the way to approach micronutrients, especially if you're trying to pick one or the other. Real common mistakes we make are looking at one or two micronutrients in each crop that we can see a visual response from out in the field. Like in corn, we get a lot of farmers that like to put on some zinc in corn, and that's the only micronutrient they put on. In wheat, we've got a lot of farmers that like copper because it really makes that wheat look better out in the field. In alfalfa, we see a lot of guys putting on boron. It, we can go on and on. There's, yeah, but there's one or two micronutrients in every crop that shows something. When you put that out in one crop, you have to remember, now you've got a whole bunch of zinc after your corn crop. If you're coming back with a different crop, all of a sudden you don't need all that zinc out there. What ends up happening is if you overdo it with one micronutrient, that could have an adverse effect on another micronutrient. It all comes down to a balance out in your soil. It's just like in your life. If you way overdo it on one particular thing, that's probably not good. You have to have an overall balance in your life. We need that in the soil, especially when you start talking about these micronutrients because the amounts are just so minute. If you need one one hundredth of a pound and you figure, what the heck, I'm going to put one pound out there, you have enough for a hundred years. <laughs> and, and now that's not, you, that's not exaggerated. Right. And now you've probably created an issue with some other micronutrients and them being short. So here's what we would recommend to you on micronutrients. You can do some soil testing. That is important. But what we prefer, even over soil testing, is doing plant tissue analysis just to see what the plant is truly short on as you go through the season. Now, you have to look at certain times of the year, like with corn, we would rather have you do more tests early in the season, probably testing every couple of weeks for the first couple months. With soybeans, test later in the season. That's when soybeans need most of their nutrients. Wheat is a grass crop. You're gonna go back to the early side. You wanna test wheat early in the season for its nutrient needs. So just do some plant tissue analysis. It'll give you a better idea what's really long or short on your farm. Okay, so you figure out that you do need some micronutrients for your crop. Now the question is, how are you going to put them out? For us on our farm, we're primarily row crop farmers with corn and soybeans being a majority of our acres. With those two crops, you can do micronutrients right in the furrow. You have to check depending on which micronutrient product you're using. But with the micronutrient blend we're using, TJ Micromix, we can actually put that in the furrow. We're using a splitter, so we're shooting it out to the sides of the furrow so we don't have it right on top of the seed. And we're typically using a quart and a half Sometimes we'll use a little bit more in higher yielding environments. You can do micronutrients in a broadcast as well in crops like wheat or like soybeans. They can take advantage of a broadcast application of micronutrients. With corn, especially if you're talking 30 inch rows or wider, it takes a long time for those roots to get to the middle of the row and capture those micronutrients. Plus, in the middle of the summer, you end up drying out and, and it's really difficult to extract nutrients out of that top couple inches of soil. So we do really like the banded approach, whether it's banded deep with your strip till eight or 10 inches below the seed, that's great. Or if you wanna put it in the furrow, that can be fine too. The main thing in the furrow is just make sure that you're not getting it on the seed and I would blend it off with water or maybe a little bit of other fertilizer as well. On our farm, we're using generally a gallon of 1034O, one and a half to two quarts of micronutrients, and then 
one to four gallons of water depending on what the whole mix ends up being. We just want to try to dilute it out as much as possible and keep it in the furrow still in a band so we have less tie up of it. That seems to work pretty well. Okay, I got one more thing. Now if you're a lawn enthusiast and you want to have the best looking lawn in your neighborhood or if you're a gardener and you want to have fantastic garden crops, micronutrients are often overlooked in those sectors as well. I've seen huge differences in my lawn when I apply some micronutrients, so do take a look at that, and in gardens it's the same thing. If you've got good healthy soil with lots of nutrients in it, you're going to have better healthier, more nutrient-rich food. So maybe you're raising tomatoes or sweet corn or a different crop out in your garden. This is really important too. If you want your family to eat better, you want better nutrition, take a look at the nutrients that you're putting in the soil. Do some soil testing and some tissue analysis there as well. And micronutrients are something that will really make a difference in yep, those but areas. But the whole thing is whether it is your lawn, your garden, or your crop, we would suggest using a blended micronutrient product that has the right ratio of micronutrients for that particular crop. And the reason why is again, if you overdo it on any one micronutrient, like let's say you just wanna put one or two micronutrients out there that you think you're short on, the tendency is to overdo it on those micronutrients and all of a sudden, yeah, you might be fine on those micronutrients, but now you created problems with other micronutrients being short. So again, we encourage you to use a blended product that's right for the crop you're planting. Well, micronutrients are tremendously important in your crop nutrient program. But another thing that's really important no matter what crop you're raising is good weed control. Can you identify this week's weed of the week?